Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, it's all about this piece of wood. I'm going to be assembling a networking and a TV distribution board. This is going to be the core of the network in a house. This is a remote location that also includes the Ubiquiti Nano Beam that I recently unboxed, the Ubiquiti Long Range Access Point. Uh, it's going to connect a few TVs together, some hardwired Ethernet lines. I'm going to have all bits of videos on this process coming up. So basically, it's a cupboard in the center of the house where everything is coming into. We've got a link out to a nano beam dish on the exterior of the house that's connecting to the internet remotely from another building. We've got the TV aerial coming in as well, which is a single line, which is then going to be split to three TVs using this four-way aerial box. We've also got a BT uh, landline connection, telephone connection coming in, which is what this socket is actually off. So that needs to be terminated in here. Even though it's not going to be used, we'll be terminating it for future, if and when a package is required on it for internet or whatever. But the primary use of this network is just going to be this switch here, which is just a dumb netgear switch. There's no routing done on this side and the PoE injector for the access point and the PoE injector for the nano beam dish which is a wireless bridge that connects remotely to another building where there's a PFSense router located where all the routing is going to be taken care of we're also installing some 13 amp double sockets on here and these are going to power everything to do with the network these are fed from a 1.5 millimeter piece of twin and earth cable which is connected to a fused connection unit elsewhere in the building and it is a dedicated supply that's only ever going to be used for the low power stuff on here. I'll overlay a photo here to show you, but you can see the telephone, the nano beam, and the TV aerial are coming in at the top. All of the outgoing feeds for the TVs and the network are coming in at the bottom. And the power is also coming in on the top left. It's important you separate the power from everything else to avoid induced voltages on the data lines and interference and other performance issues. Let's get to building this board. Okay, so this board is going to be mounted this way, as you can see the up arrow, in the top of a cupboard. And I need to mount all of this stuff to the board, and then I can just screw this board in using these six screw holes, top, bottom corners, and in the middle. And then everything is going to be cable managed neatly. So I've got to work out where I'm going to position things. Now I know my power is coming in in the top left corner, so I'm going to try and keep all of my power sockets and things in this corner. Then I want to keep the TV aerial connections away from the networking ones if possible so they'll probably go down I don't know down here because the incoming TV antenna connection is quite long so I could tuck that down the back and bring it up at the bottom and then my networking I'm probably going to try and keep the PoE injectors up here somewhere because my mains power is going to be up here so that can come in to these and then I'm going to probably put the network switch down here and all the ethernet connections going down to the bottom because that's where they go out of the cupboard so then I will be able to just come out the switch up into the injectors and then out to the beam and the access point. So that's my first thoughts of how I'm going to try and set this up. I've also got to fit this telephone master socket on, which will probably go somewhere in the middle here or in the corner. or I'm not quite sure. So to start off with, I'm just going to take all this junk off the board and then we're going to try and position it. All of this stuff is mountable it's got the holes on the back so I'm going to start with the sockets now obviously I don't want to cover the screw holes that are here because I can't mount the board into the cupboard then and I want this to be removable in the future if I need to lift it out a little bit and I don't want to have to be unscrewing sockets and everything just to, to lift this out so if I put them sort of there or maybe even up there I could put the second one at the side of it perhaps and then maybe the PoE injectors up here. I haven't actually got both PoE injectors at the moment because the other one is currently in use on the nano beam for our link to the building. So that could be a possibility. Then I'm just looking at how I'm going to get these cables out, but I've got to get the, the landline in as well. So if I went down here, maybe, or maybe even if I put them one on top of the other, that's not bad because then I can access both of those screw holes uh, I could put the phone socket here maybe in line with the other sockets these are going to go on there, the front plates so we put those like that 
the Ethernet switch at the moment is just this 8 port one. This is just something I had hanging around. This will be changed in the future to a gigabit 16 port. But there's only 100 megabit ports on the nano beams. So this is really sufficient for now. So I'm going to put that somewhere down in this corner. I want to leave space to put a larger switch in. So obviously this one's got the LEDs here though. So the newer ones are more compact. The ports are closer together. So if I leave a bit of room above that. Uh, back to these injectors, I'm tempted to put them this way and put the power cables around the back and then have the ethernets on this side, or I could do them that way, which might not be so bad because then the power can come in the top, the LAN can go in there and then it can go out, so there's a possibility. The aerial amplifier needs to go on, we're going to be using this input here and then we're going to be using these outputs. So I'm tempted to put it that way because then the feed could come down and up under behind the board and then the outputs would be facing that way. But then I'm also more tempted to do it this way for cable management purposes because then I could have them as a bunch and I could have the network cables as a bunch. I'm trying to make this really clean and obvious what everything's doing on first glance. I don't want to cross too many things over one another and even though this is going into a cupboard where no one's likely to ever see it other than me I would like it to look nice and be proud of it okay so I think I've now worked out how I'm going to position things I think this phone socket is in fact going to go up here maybe there or there one or the other because the advantage this has got is it's only ever going to be that big the PoE injectors though are that big before they've got the power cable plugged in or the ethernet cables plugged in so that's going to take up more room the reason I don't want to put them here really is because they're going to eat into the space for the network switch so if it was then upgraded to a 16 port one in the future it may be too close or not fit at all because of the connectors on these injectors if they were over here I mean I know that's quite a bit of room but I'm not sure how big the 16 port variants of these type of switches are I'm going to mount these sockets now, I'm going to mount this, uh, I'm probably going to mount this TV amp as well because uh, that's going to stay there, they're going to stay there, I know what I'm up to with them. So I'm just going to get some of these screws and uh, little short ones and mount them on to the board. Okay so my camera decided to stop recording for some reason, but anyway, I've mounted one of the sockets and wired it in, as you can see, this is the cable that needs to go into the other one. But there's not a massive amount of point in me wiring that into here because I've got to also wire the feed in. So I'll do that over there when I'm installing the board. But that's the two sockets in place. Next thing to do, I'm feeling, is the aerial amplifier splitter, which is here. This has just got two screw mounts on it here. So I'm just going to get to two screws here. And it's literally a case of screwing these into the board and then hooking the amplifier over it. And that holds it. Okay, so that is now slid into place, that's not going to come off. I've tightened the screws up behind it and just pushed it over. We've then got this power cable to take care of off it. But that shouldn't be too bad, I could either shorten that and put a new plug on it. Or just sort of tie it up out the way or run it along the back, most probably. I'll probably put it underneath and out at the top. So the next thing I'm going to attack is this telephone socket which also seems to be missing one of the screws but I can sort that out uh, will this plate come away now it's screwed in it also wants a good clean because it's in pretty minging condition really so I'm going to get some warm water on a cloth and wipe this over really quickly before I proceed okay so the master socket's now lovely and shiny white clean as opposed to the filthy colour it was before. I'm going to go and mount this. There's already one knockout used there, which is the one I'm going to come into. I'm going to mount it probably right up at the top here. So I think that's where that's going to go. And then I can put the POE injector somewhere here in some kind of orientation. That will give me plenty of room here 
to mount the switch for expansion in the future or anything else that might need mounting. There's the master socket now mounted on the top corner. The next piece I'm going to work on mounting uh, I think is these PoE injectors. So I'm going to split this apart. need to remember that the points point away from where the mains comes in uh, and I'm going to mount these probably there because I'm not sure where else I would mount them otherwise and I'm going to leave a bit of space in between them for them to breathe because obviously these are power supplies so I think yeah, I think I'm going to go for that. So I'm going to screw these in. Now I'm going to put this injector on here just because they do overhang the base plate. So I need to set that into account. And I'm going to go with this one about the... I think. Also, before anybody points out, I am well aware that these are mounted upside down. You can tell from the logo and this little arrow. But well, that's the cleanest way to do it in this case because the power cables stay away from all the networking and the networking ports are right in front of the switch this way. Okay, so there we have both of the PoE injector mounts mounted perfectly. And the next thing I've got to mount is this network switch. So that's the same sort of system as the antenna amplifier was. So I need to just decide now where I'm going to put this. The way I see it is it's either going to go down here in the bottom or it's going to go up here. So I would have a dead space down here if I did it that way. But there would be more room to bring cables up and manage it. So I'm not sure um, where exactly to put it. I think I might go around about I think I might go around about there because it's sort of central from the top and the bottom sorry I can't fit this all in in one shot this is a very tall board so yeah I think that's probably where that's gonna go okay so I've just done the same thing here put the switch down, marked the holes, screwed the screws in so I'm now gonna drop the ethernet switch on and mount that now to note on this switch as well, it can be slid three ways, you can push it down, across, one way or the other. So I'm going to see which way works best for that, I'm just going to line up over the screws. There we go. It's now sat on over the screw heads, and I'm going to say pushing it that way is probably best. So let's go with one, two. That's now nice and secure, it's not going anywhere. So that's now the switch mounted, the antenna amplifier, the PoE injectors, the telephone socket, and the mains power sockets. So we're pretty much done here in terms of the mounts of the, the stuff that's going into this installation at the moment. But we're far from done in the fact that we've got to do cable management. This is probably the most time consuming part. I've got one wall adapter power supply, which is for the switch. That's going to have to go in one of these top two sockets, probably up here, right out the way, because otherwise it's going to block the sockets above. So if we put that in there, we're going to put the aerial lamp into one of these, maybe that one. And then we've got these two for the PoE injectors, so I'm going to have to sort those out as well. I also need to sort the length of this cable out and sort where I'm going to route this. This is only low voltage, I don't mind stuff like this going near the network cable because there's only like 12 volts going through it and it's not going to cause any major interference. So I'm going to find a way of doing this. I've also got to make some short patch cables to link from the switch to the PoE injectors. So I'm going to make those up as well, I'm just going to bring them across here and up. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of this now and then I will update you in a moment, I don't want to bore you too much. Okay, so a lot has changed since I last recorded a bit. I got a bit carried away really. I've installed lots of power cabling as you can see. This is managed around the edge for the ethernet switch up to there. We've got the TV antenna amplifier going there down the bottom. Comes back up the top up here and along. That's then tied 
to these here custom length clover leaf connectors that I've made. These were using the included European power cables cut down when new plugs fitted. So these are the ends off them, they'll be going in the bin. So they are perfect length now for the two PoE injectors here. I've cable tied these down. I've also put some cable clips in to put the ties through. As you can see there, I'm using cable clips not to clip the cable, just to hold the cable tie. Like that. And that's how I've done that. I've also tied up the network, uh, the antenna amplifier cable around the back. You can see I've actually used a clip there, but that will be uh, repurposed with a cable tie because there'll be a lot more running there. And that's bunched up at the bottom here, the excess cable. And I've installed a selection of these clips around the edges, which I'm going to cable tie everything to. But I obviously can't do that until I've got more of the cable in fitted. I also made some short patch cables here, a white and a black ended one with boots on. I've made these the perfect length for the PoE injectors, so if we plug into the LAN side and plug into the switch, that's pretty much perfectly where it wants to be. Same with this one for the other injector, like so. So there's that done. I need the other injector obviously. Uh, then I'm going to have to bring the cables into here for the access point and the nano beam uh, dish which are coming down from the roof about here in the cupboard. So we're going to have the long line come straight into the top of this box. There's a knockout in the top which there's a hole for it to go into. Then I'm going to bring the cable for the wireless access point in the building and the nano beam dish connection in down here and around up into here. The TV antenna is also coming in up here which is just going to go straight down the back of the board with that power cable. Then I'll bring that up down here at the bottom probably along here and round that needs to go into this one. The TV cables can come out and then I'm gonna depending on how long the connectors are and how much of a bend I can get on the cable without damaging it or straining it I'm gonna pin and try and zip tie them up here so I want the TV cables to be there and then I'm going to do all the network cables here so I should hopefully have sort of an inch between them and they'll snake down to the bottom and that's pretty much where I'm up to and what I've planned obviously I need to hook this thing up yet yeah. I'm also going to label the PoE injectors and the plugs and things but I can do that once everything's installed in the cupboard so the next part is going to be putting this into the cupboard and terminating everything to it I will be fitting this in its own separate video because this video is already quite long leave a like if you like this video any questions or suggestions put them down in the comments below subscribe for future random technology videos like this one and thank you for watching